All right, let's finish this. Hello and welcome back to the Miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Selenny. I typically cover TV, pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things on this channel, so subscribe if that's your vibe. Lately, it's been a lot of Love is Blind though, so I guess I'm a Love is Blind channel as well. In this video, I wanted to cover episodes 8 through 12, and that includes the reunion. Episodes 8 through 10 were dropped first, and then 11 and 12 were dropped a week later. And I was just as fooled as you probably were if you're watching it in real time. I was honestly counting on the finale dropping last week instead of this week and then the three episodes drop and I am gagged that it ends in a cliffhanger with only the second wedding we've seen. I personally just wish Love is Blind would drop in one chunk, especially them dragging out the finale. I saw a lot of fans resort to spoilers, like the fans on Reddit were looking up marriage licenses in Texas and finding out spoilers of which couples got married. I do like that the reunion was tacked on to the final episode. I hate when you get the end of the season and then a whole week later is the reunion. Like by that week, you don't care about these people. You already forgot these people's names. So I like that aspect of season three that the reunion came out with the finale. Since we already know the outcomes of the wedding, I won't be covering play by play every single episode, every single thing, every Every couple went through. I'm just going to go through each couple and discuss the big moments. So mainly the decision at the altar, what I think about it, what the fans think about it, the reunion of course, and also some of the big moments like the aquarium date, the cutie story. We have to discuss the cutie story. It's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> I forgot to give my disclaimer this episode. Disclaimer, we are talking about real people and what I'm discussing in this video is based on what we've seen on TV. We can't judge or say how these people are in real life. We can only go off of what they've shown us. It's just a TV show. We don't know these people's full lives. And by the way, I gathered more data from the Love is Blind official Instagram stories where they polled the audience about who they thought would say yes or no at the altar. And this poll was taken just before the finale episode, but at the time I screenshotted it, it had only been 10 minutes since the poll was up. So take the data with a grain of salt. <laughs> For Nancy and Bartiz, 30% of the fans thought they would say yes and 70% said no. The amount of people that thought it would be a yes for them increased from this episode to the previous predictions because Nancy and Bartiz were seeming a little more solid leading up to the wedding. And I just want to give a metaphorical award to Nancy for being such an excellent communicator this whole season. I really appreciated watching her. Every single conversation she had with Bartiz, even the hard stuff about abortion or when she was confronting him about how he might have been acting immature in her opinion. She always delivered it in a very classy way but also very direct and honest and that's a very hard balance to strike in conflict. I don't know how much therapy training speech pathologists get but it seems like she works with children and I imagine she has had a, a significant amount of education about human psychology and how to speak to all kinds of different people. So it makes a lot of sense why she's like this. She's also in her early 30s. But I just appreciated watching her all season and I feel like I learned a little bit from her on just like what is a healthy way to approach conflict in a relationship and approach hard discussions. And I think because she always came to Bartiz in such an eloquent and direct way, Bartiz actually started switching up his act and doing better for her. He apologized after he had been distant for a while and he started showing physical affection again. They did a really sweet dance lesson where he seemed into her a nice dinner. And then the most surprising of it all in hindsight is when he took her to get the permanent bracelets. And that to me was kind of weird, or not weird, but I was like, oh, maybe Bartiz is taking this more seriously because it felt like this 
permanent thing to do together and he seemed very confident about their relationship in that moment. So once we get to the wedding, their wedding was the cliffhanger. I said it from the beginning, I think Nancy and Bartise were a main character couple for the season. Though by the end of all of this, that title might have been snatched by Cole and Zainab but we will get to them. <laughs> so Nancy and Bartiz's wedding was a cliffhanger where we saw at the end of episode 10, Nancy said, I do. And we were left in the mystery of Bartiz's decision. Opening episode 11, Bartiz says no to Nancy, I do not. Based on how Bartiz got so emotional about Nancy's gift before the wedding, I thought that was a big clue that he was gonna say no. Uh, because the way he was crying, it felt more like he felt bad for letting her go when she's so thoughtful or bad for not matching her thoughtfulness and how he's probably about to break her heart. So Nancy is pretty blindsided by his decision. She was expecting him to say yes because she had clearly communicated to him that if he was feeling doubts, uh, he would tell her and not allow it to get this far. And Nancy's family was distraught about this decision. Uh, her brother, who had been skeptical about Bartise for very correct reasons, he was really upset that he didn't want to be right. Of course, her mom, who is this very intense lady, was very upset. The whole time post-wedding, Nancy kept her composure while talking to Bartise, and that's why I'm saying she's such a great communicator that even in this moment where she's blindsided, heartbroken, and emotional, she's able to carry a very eloquent and direct conversation with Bartise, and her family kept trying to come in and interrupt, and more people joined in, and it was like a mob with pitchforks coming at Bartise, which was entertaining. It made for a great TV. But I felt bad for Nancy having to deal with the stress of her family also being upset and mad and trying to come in and say things because it felt like she had to be strong for them and keep her composure while their, her family wasn't keeping their composure. I, I know it's, it's an emotional thing, so I don't blame them and they hated parties and it was kind of funny to watch them like come at him. I just felt a little bad for Nancy having to figure out her own stuff between her and Bartiz and also kind of console her family and rein them in. She even mentioned to Bartiz like what hurts her the most in this moment is like the embarrassment and like stress this is causing her family. I do have to agree with the brother that Bartiz is a punk. Punk is such an old school insult, but it felt so right in that moment. And when he was talking to Nancy afterwards, Bartiz was implying that he wanted to leave the door open for their relationship and Nancy was like, absolutely not. He was like, but you just said yes to me at the altar, implying that that should mean she should want to continue a relationship with him. And she's like, yeah, but you said no, which is pretty black and white that you don't want to be together. And I'm just really glad she closed that door right away. She ripped off the bracelet. That's a very satisfying moment. And Bartiz leaves the situation thinking he did nothing wrong. And the edit of this was so shady because he, as he was finishing giving his interview, the song was like, all these excuses. <laughs> and Love is Blind is always giving you not so secret secret messages in the music they choose for every moment if you don't know how to feel about a scene the music will tell you <laughs> and i love that bartiz got this shady edit of a song that was saying you're bullshitting basically in the end bartiz seems like a fuck boy to me like he doesn't seem to be truly genuinely sorry or seem to have cared that much about the situation at that point their age gap is what nancy was so hesitant about in the beginning and i think that ended up being their undoing he is 25 and clearly isn't ready to move on from kind of like dating around and being more superficial in what he goes for and we got confirmation about that in the reunion where the women confronted him about how he was seen on social media hanging out with a tall blonde girl just days after the wedding. That to me was the nail in the coffin that he is a fuckboy officially. Did not respect the commitment he made to Nancy, did not respect Nancy at all. And I loved in the reunion that SK confronted him 
about him hitting on Raven at the pool. Bartiz keeps like apologizing to the group, like verbally saying sorry, but I just didn't feel any sincerity with that. And I just don't believe his acting. Like to me, most of the time, and I said it in previous videos, Bartiz just felt very much like he was playing a character instead of really saying what he was thinking. Um, except for when he would say what he was thinking and it would be very inappropriate to Nancy. <laughs> and the most annoying part about this whole thing is that Bartiz got saved by all of the heat being on Cole and Zena because their situation was so much more like complex and nuanced. And I saw several tweets about this uh, on my timeline that the energy that was directed at Cole during the reunion should have been directed at Bartiz. <laughs> I definitely don't think he deserved Nancy. She had so much going for her. She's a beautiful woman and also has like a real estate empire. I see her with someone a lot more put together than someone like Bartiz. Also, he did say that hanging out with the tall blonde girl for a weekend on a boat or something was his way of coping with <laughs> his failed wedding. Let's move on to Zenev and Cole. I already know this section is going to be the longest um, because they are complicated. So in episodes eight and nine, for the most part, Zenev and Cole seem to be doing better. Um, Cole clearly started upping his compliments to her. The biggest scene about that was probably the dancing lesson where he was complimenting her a lot. And it did feel like he was overcompensating for past mistakes a bit, but it was sweet and you could tell Zanab lit up and appreciated when he gave compliments like that. Things really took a turn for them though when they had their last night together before the wedding. That was the cooking blow up. This is when Cole is trying to make dinner for Zanab and Zanab comes in and is very bossy in the kitchen. Potatoes are gonna take too long. The white unseasoned piece of chicken. He pulls out a Nerf gun and starts hitting her with it and she gets mad about that. She gives him the lecture about the white wine stemmed glass thing. And once they're eating the dinner, they start fighting because Zeneb starts being passive aggressive about the Nerf gun thing. And Cole starts saying he gets two versions of her and that he wants her to just be sweet to him. And she's upset about that. Like she can't be sweet all the time. And then that leads Cole to ask, are you bipolar in a snarky tone? I do think they were both in the wrong in certain ways. But I do think that comment crossed a line and was a low blow. It's shitty to people that have bipolar. Like, regardless if she does have a any kind of mental health issues or disorders, it is a very rude and inappropriate comment to make to someone you love. The snarky tone and smirk of his kind of tells me that he knew what he was doing. He knew he was pushing buttons and crossing a line. So she is understandably pretty emotional about that and ends up walking out. Cole realizes what he's done and chases after her and they end up talking. They do end up reconciling. I forget which one of them said it, but one of them says, I love you. I just hate you a little bit too. And I just thought that was a good <laughs> summation of this whole thing and why it's so unhealthy. They just bring out the absolute worst in each other. And it was this incident where I was like, they are both so much better off not together. Once we get to the weddings, it seems like Cole is pretty confident. He feels like they've overcome a lot of obstacles and challenges and gotten past them. Zainab seemed confident to me too in the prep for the wedding, though she does express worry about their issues. And she does admit she doesn't know what she's gonna say and that she'll decide in the moment. I have trouble believing that based on her speech because her speech was very thought out. I felt like very well written. <laughs> I just mean it didn't feel impromptu. So yeah, we don't get to hear what Cole says at the altar, but 
Zeneb says no, and she doesn't just say I do not like others we've seen. She gives a long and very harsh speech to Cole. It starts off pretty normal, and she says she's grown a lot. She's learned a lot of about herself in the past two months. It seemed like a normal speech to me. And then it starts taking a turn. <laughs> um, and you see the audience reactions, and that is just so funny like it's not funny but it's funny everyone starts looking shocked uh by what zeneb is saying she gets pretty harsh though she is saying the truth to him that he has shattered her self-confidence and that she can't be the woman he wants she has tried to manipulate herself into being that woman i do think this speech was a little too harsh on cole because it was in front of all of his friends, all of her family and friends, and the cameras, and all dressed up. And it did kind of seem like a total blindside to Cole. Um, so all these things, I think, made the speech pretty harsh. Was it too harsh? That is the question. And Zeynep and Cole are such a tricky couple, probably the trickiest couple we've had on any season of Love is Blind. It's not as easy to pick sides as we've seen with previous Love is Blind villains. I know comparing people and relationships isn't like the healthiest thing, but in this case where we're watching an edited reality show and only a very select few people have gone through this very strange experiment, when you compare Zeynep and Cole to a couple like Nancy and Bartiz, Nancy and Bartiz feel a lot more black and white because Bartiz is a fuckboy, it seems like, from everything we've seen. And Nancy is a very secure, confident, and an excellent communicator. She communicated all her needs and wants to Bartiz. It was kind of all on Bartiz uh, to either reciprocate or not, and he ended up not. Also, when you compare Zeynep and Cole to a couple like Deep D and Shake in season two, where they had similar issues where Shake was pretty rude about Deep D's appearance. With them, it's kind of clear who is the villain. And villain is a strong word. I don't think anyone on these shows is like inherently evil. But as far as reality TV goes, they were clear villains in their stories. When you get to Zeynep and Cole, it is not obvious who is the villain in this. There's just so many subtle things at play. I do think Zeynep's speech was a little too harsh, but it made excellent TV. I gotta give it that. I can appreciate those moments that are probably bad for the people involved, but you just can't look away from the car crash. It just, that's the basis of reality TV and why we love it <laughs> as much as we don't want to admit it. And what I can gather for why Zeynep decided to make this very harsh speech. I mean, I don't know if she wanted like a deep D moment where everyone's like, yay, queen, you stood up to him, which they literally did applaud, which Zeynep says was not a premeditated applause in the reunion, she clarified. I'm assuming Zeynep thought if she told him these truths in this, this high stakes situation, Cole would learn his lesson and not do this to another woman ever again. Think about if Zeynep had brought up these points that she made in the speech that he shattered her self-esteem. If she had made those points in private in a more everyday life conversation, he probably wouldn't have listened and would have fought back and denied everything. So I'm not saying it's the correct Thing. I'm just saying I'm assuming that was her reasoning that if she gave this harsh speech he would learn his lesson better and I do think that her ultimate decision to say no was the correct decision and I feel like Cole seemed really blindsided and he seemed like he was gonna say yes I don't think he ever confirmed if he was or not but Cole should have also known he should have said no they just brought out the absolute worst in each other and he should be grateful that she said no. Not how she delivered it. I know he didn't like being embarrassed like that, but I was surprised he was so blindsided because it was clearly a toxic relationship and I'm shocked he didn't realize that and he was gonna say yes at the altar. I don't know if he was going to, but he shouldn't have said yes to that. And something no one's talking about is that he has been married before and almost in a similar time frame as Love is Blind. It's actually surprising he would choose to go on this show at all when he's had a 
failed if you want to call it, failed marriage that happened similarly quickly i would think he would want a more longer term relationship before getting married a second time so just in general i feel like his previous marriage was not shown or discussed at all and also like yes he is younger uh bartiz's age he comes off as like goofy and immature but if he's been married before, he has done a lot of growing up, I would think. And going through a divorce, I would think, matures you a bit. So, I don't know. It just feels like this missing piece of the puzzle that no one ever talked about. And it's easy to forget about that part of his story because it seems so irrelevant to anything. But I would think it's very relevant if you're getting married a second time. Why do you want to get married fast again <laughs> to somebody? And then at the reunion, Cole had a tough tough time. The whole cast definitely piled on on him um, and villainized him a lot and he was pretty emotional. He had a very distinct reaction to Bartise who was pretty emotionless and uh, was just like I don't want to discuss anything um, and was pretty on the defensive. At the reunion they show a montage of Zena nagging at Cole and Cole actually defends her. It's before he gets really hated on by everybody um, and says the nagging wasn't that bad and also his goofiness wasn't that extreme and Zenab seems to agree so I definitely believe him because reality TV just loves to put people in boxes and just label them as one thing and that's their thing I think it just makes it easier for audiences to understand and digest the TV show and so later in the reunion the girls start piling on and implying that Cole did some bad things off camera. Zendev mentions that Cole, after his bachelor party, he got a girl's phone number and asked her to kiss him. And Zendev says she knows this because Cole told her the night before the wedding. Cole vehemently denies this. This did not happen in his eyes. He says only men were at the bachelor party. It was low key. And the girls say the boys went out after off camera and that is where things happened. No other man confirms the story that Cole got a girl's number and Cole denies it. Brennan says he was too drunk to remember. Uh, the other men don't seem to have an answer. So it's very hard to know who to believe because they are both very adamant about it. Trigger warning for talking about disordered eating, body shaming. I always put timestamps and chapters in my video, so just skip this part because this is kind of the biggest story that everyone is discussing in the fandom. And this is the other big allegation from the girls about Cole. It's not clear how much the girls witnessed of Cole's bad behavior or if all of the allegations were just told to them through Zenup. Several of the girls mentioned the tangerine cuties incident and that Cole controlled Zenup's food intake and body shamed her. And Zenup tells him, you are lucky they didn't use this footage. Specifically, they describe the cuties story where she hadn't eaten all day and she went to grab two cuties, the little tangerine things, and started eating them. And Cole said, you're really gonna eat that right now you're gonna spoil your appetite and we're about to have a huge dinner so cole again denies these allegations at the reunion and it's like what are you talking about i didn't do that i never policed your food intake so at the end of the reunion we see the scene that they are referring to the cutie story the most controversial scene <laughs> in love is blind history it is hotly debated i have seen a lot of discourse on it i think most people are in my boat like i tend to agree with most people that are somewhere in the middle ground and not taking sides because it's really hard to pick a side here and it's a very nuanced conversation i even asked my friends about it too and they agreed it was like a complex thing so in the cutie story scene i don't think cole had any bad intentions with his comments they do have that interaction that was described at the reunion where he asks about the two cuties and tells her she's gonna spoil her appetite because they're about to have a big dinner but she does respond to him and says i've only had a banana today and he's confused and it says why and she says oh i shouldn't tell you there's a reason but i can't tell you and he kind of isn't listening to that part and it's just like i offered you a poke bowl earlier and she's like no i didn't want that 
After that, it seems like he's trying to guess maybe why she's cutting down her food intake and is like, are you trying to get wedding dress ready? Um, and it genuinely felt like he was just trying to guess what her reasoning was and not saying she should get wedding dress ready. <laughs> and that's where the scene ends. He didn't seem controlling of her food intake. It seems like Zainab has some triggers about food that made her think this, even though Cole's intention didn't seem malicious, she took it as that. And I feel like Zainab's main issue is around communication with Cole because she like assumes he can mind read her um, and that's never a healthy thing in relationships and in approaching conflict in relationships. And I empathize with her a lot. I've fallen into some sort of these traps. I think a lot of women might empathize and relate to her struggle, especially around sensitive issues like food and weight. But she just expected Cole to read between the lines about why she wasn't eating. And Cole is pretty young, not the most emotionally intelligent. I would not expect him to know about disordered eating issues. <laughs> should we expect him to? I don't know, but we shouldn't expect him to know things that Zenob hasn't said out loud. If she's not directly communicating her feelings and her thoughts, she can't expect him to know them. And that's kind of no matter what kind of relationship you're in. Take Nancy as an example. She's kind of like, the gold standard to me of how to like communicate a conflict in a relationship. Zenob can't blame Cole as much as like Nancy can blame Bartise because Nancy spelled out to Bartise what she wanted, what she needed, while Zenob just said cryptic things or gave a sigh here and there and expects Cole to just know what that means. The issue with Cole and Zenob is that the cutie story is not an isolated incident. It was really the pool party incident that Zenob never got past. And it feels like that incident where Cole flirted with Colleen and said Colleen's a 10 out of 10 and Raven's a 10 out of 10 too, that broke her self-esteem so much. After those comments from Cole, she, her mind is gonna notice, oh, what do Colleen and Raven have in common? oh, they're very thin women. And Cole says that's his type. He, he mentions that later. So I think from that moment, Zainab felt like she was not adequate at her current body type and like she needed to lose weight to look more like those women or be more his type. There's also a comment where we see Cole at the beach when it was, it's an early episode. He stops eating and it's like, I need to stop fattening myself up and She's like, are you okay with fattening me up though? Cause she's still eating. And he's like, yeah, whatever, haha. -ha. And again, I don't think his comments were thought out as like malicious or trying to police her food intake. But from her perspective, it she's reading into any time he mentions food um, or weight and like spiraling probably <laughs> uh, with anxiety over it. So I think the cutie story was just the aftermath of that breakdown of self-esteem and her trying to fit a mold that Cole would like better. He never actually, that we saw, policed her food intake um, or controlled food or anything, or even made direct comments about her weight, but he did make those comments about Colleen and Raven that made Zainab feel inferior and inadequate and likely led her down a spiral towards disordered eating. It's a tricky situation. And I think after the reunion, uh, Zainab is the one that's being more villainized while at the reunion, Cole was the one being more villainized. Like I'm sure they're both getting their share of hate from the fandom. Also, I would be very surprised if Cole had all of these food controlling policing moments and they decided not to air them. If we know anything, we know reality TV loves drama. They would have edited in those scenes of Cole being controlling over food intake. I'm always skeptical on any reality show when someone says this and this happened and it didn't make the edit and you're lucky it didn't because you looked really bad in that. Uh, because I'm always like, reality TV isn't 
<laughs> interested in protecting the cast very much. The editors cut out the cutie story because it was a boring scene, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, not because anything outrageous happened. If something outrageous would have happened and Cole got mad at her for eating something, it would have made the cut. And I just think they brought out the absolute worst in each other and they did not need to be together. They were an awful match. <laughs> um, and I feel like they just got together over being religious, which I guess it's not enough <laughs> for marriage. Do you believe love is enough for marriage? Do you believe religion is enough for marriage? No. <laughs> We've learned that. <laughs> it's a complicated one. It's a really hard discussion to have on the internet where nuance is hard to come by and articulate. So I know people feel passionately about this, but they're not together anymore. Hopefully they'll live their own separate lives and grow from this and find better partnerships and get therapy. Free therapy for everyone. That should be the prize of Love is Blind. <laughs> Free therapy for all. By the way, I forgot to mention for Zenith and Cole, 26% of audiences thought they would say yes and 74% thought no. So I think everyone was on a similar page that they were not good for each other. Um, we saw that time and time again. Finally, let's move on to Colleen and Matt. 19% uh, of people thought they would say yes and 81% said no. The fan polls had been 50-50 after the first batch of episodes and after the second batch of episodes. But after the third batch of episodes, they were down to 19% yes and 81% no. Which is more percent no than Nancy and Bartiz and Zenith and Cole, the most like turbulent couples we've seen. So a lot of people didn't think Colleen and Matt would make it. And they ended up making it. I. <laughs> I would have never have guessed this. It's wild because, you know, Bartiz and Nancy and Cole and Zena took all the spotlight as main characters, but Colleen and Matt just worry me. <laughs> There's just still a lot of red flags to Matt. When Colleen met Matt's friends, she described the night that Matt went crazy about her going to the club. She tells her side of the story, which is that the whole cast had agreed to meet at the club together and the girls took a separate Uber, the boys took another Uber. And for whatever reason, the boys ended up back home and the girls ended up at the club. Colleen even called him asking if he was gonna come to the club and then later FaceTimed him from the club and it was with the FaceTime that he started getting really mad. The way Matt presented it when he was all upset and packing was that she just went off to the club without telling him. When Colleen is telling this side of the story to Matt's friends, it's clear they had agreed upon this plan and Matt just was so drunk he forgot the plan. So that's, again, the biggest red flag with Matt in general is that he makes up his own narrative to get outraged about and then gets outraged. He's not mad about like actual things happening. He makes up the story in his head with few details and then gets blinded by rage. Later on, we had the aquarium date, which was really awkward and Matt seemed scary again there. He asked the question, do you think love is enough for marriage? And Colleen seemed scared, but ended up being honest and said no, and that she was unsure about them because of how he gets mad. And he just progressively started getting angrier and angrier and he got to that moment where he's like say it say it say it <laughs> and it was just kind of terrifying and again the music was giving us little clues <laughs> about how we should feel about this when this aquarium date was ending they play the some music that's like this is toxic <laughs> not the britney spears one but this might be toxic <laughs> And that is right, <laughs> this might be. And for Matt and Colleen, in general, I just feel like it was kind of a one-sided relationship. It feels like Matt just expected undying loyalty and support from Colleen at all times, but didn't want to reciprocate. And he mentions he wants to try to reciprocate, but when he tries, he somehow ends up mad again. And at the bachelorette party, Colleen mentions to the other girls, like, I would take a bullet for him, but I don't know if he would for me. And that sort of sums up that dynamic where he expects like 100% from her, but what does she get in return? It's not quite clear. And Matt is even a little self-aware about this at his bachelor party, telling his friends that he doesn't know why he picks these fights. He suggests it might be self-sabotage of some sort, and it might be he has trauma around cheating, so, he's, you know, over the top, overcompensating for it, or, you know, overly controlling. But 
that's still not fair to Colleen if he hasn't sorted out his own self to let her live her life and be an independent lady. At the wedding, both Colleen and Matt seemed very unsure throughout the whole prep. I was honestly expecting them to say no because both of them are like, I don't know, I'll see at the altar how I feel. I was really thrown by how Colleen kept describing their relationship as a roller coaster and she mentioned it as a positive, like a roller coaster she doesn't want to get off of. But like, but the best way to describe a relationship you're gonna be in forever, a roller coaster. It's an accurate description, but is it healthy? I don't believe so. And at the reunion, Matt and Colleen don't get much attention, which I don't know what the right thing would be to do there because they are married and you know, the show wants them to succeed. Um, so they don't wanna pull at the threads of toxicity that might be there. I think that's my theory. But like, as much as Bartise and Cole might have deserved some call-outs, I think Matt deserves some call-outs too at this reunion. But it's trickier because they're like a successful couple so they, they have to be treated as like on a pedestal for some reason. I don't know if it's just me and I said it in the other video. Colleen looks like a hostage every time she's next to Matt. To me, like maybe it's just her face. But she just looks scared. And when they were gonna show the pool party footage, she looked terrified. I'm thinking now it's just her face, but I just hope she's fine and happy. I did get concerned too that Matt said they've still had some little arguments post-marriage. And based on how he describes the blow-ups he's had throughout the season, he describes them all as like little obstacles. So I worry they've been bigger than he's making them sound like. That's another thing, every time him and Colleen talk about their issues that they've had, they downplay them a lot. They downplay the intensity of them. I don't know if they're gonna make the distance. I wasn't confident that they were gonna get married at all. And I hate saying that to the couples that end up married. I don't like to wish like failure on any couple, you know? So let's move on to Alexa and Brennan, our most smooth and unproblematic couple. 69% of the Instagram story poll audiences said they would say yes, 31% said no. It seems like audiences were less confident going into the finale, but I don't blame them because the editors played us <laughs> with their story and in all the previews about the weddings, it looked like Brennan was not himself and he was not sure what he was gonna say and Alexa was set up to be blindsided by him. So the preview fooled me. I don't, might have fooled y'all too. They really like took liberties with showing stuff in the previews that they weren't gonna show in the full cut. But yeah, Alexa and Brennan were a less featured couple, I think because they didn't have much drama going on. On the actual wedding day, aside from the previews, they were very confident. They were both gonna say yes. They were hoping the other was confident as it had seemed and yeah everything went smoothly at the reunion one interesting moment i thought for them was when alexa self-reflected about how she had been a little cold to brennan after watching the show back it's something i had called out in my first video about this that like brennan was being very affectionate and verbal with his love towards alexa and she was just like okay sure <laughs> cool <laughs> she kind of self-reflected on that and felt bad about how she came off and now she is more affectionate, she claims. So it was nice to see some, a moment of self-reflection. Aside from that, the rest of the reunion, Alexa and Brennan were focused on other couples, mostly Alexa criticizing Cole, actually Brennan too. Alexa is very much team Zeneb in the Zeneb and Cole debacle. Alexa does claim that she knows of other things off camera that Cole has done and that's why she is so hateful towards him. Since we don't have that footage, we can't judge that. So yeah, I think Alexa and Brennan were a little harsh at Cole during the reunion, but they seem like a healthy couple, isolated from that, seem to really love each other, and I'm very much rooting for them to go the distance for Love is Blind. I really hope so, I'm really rooting for them. I don't wanna hear a divorce announcement from them. Hope they continue uh, having a nice journey, and I appreciate their healthy dynamic that they showed this season. And finally, we have our last couple, Raven and SK, and 37% of the fandom thought they would say yes, 
and 63% thought no. And this poll was taken before episodes 8 through 10 came out. Because we did see their wedding at the end of episode 10, a lot more of the fans thought they would say yes than I would have expected. Freda and SK had a very interesting journey. Um, they started out so distant and weird where I thought there was no way in hell they could get married and really grew closer and closer and seemed emotionally compatible as time went on. I love how SK affirms Raven so much. He validates her feelings. I really related to Raven when she was talking about how she feels so different from the other girls. Not in like a pick me way, but she was saying how she doesn't dream of, you know, being a stay at home mom or being a mom at all or being a housewife. It seems like all the other girls really want that. And I just appreciated the representation for a less traditional type of wife <laughs> or desire to be a different type of wife. Yeah, most of the people going on Love is Blind want a very traditional marriage. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't personally relate to it. And it was cool to see Raven and relate to that aspect of her wants with her marriage. And also I appreciated how SK just affirmed her and validated that belief and didn't manipulate or try to change her to be something she didn't want to be. At the altar, SK did end up saying no to Raven and we didn't get to hear Raven's answer, but she says in an interview she would have said yes. I always find it hard to believe what they say after the wedding. Like I'm never sure if they are just saying, oh, I would have said yes to gain sympathy or something. It does make some sense to me that SK was the one to say no and Raven would have said yes because SK was so validating and affirming and always compromising with Raven and Raven was not reciprocating that. Instead, she was, you know, making fun of his decor, his velvet, how he's a square, and it was mostly playful. I mean, she did, like, verbalize what she liked about him and stuff. It was more of, like, the compromising thing. Like, she just wasn't willing to compromise on anything of these, like, big life decisions. I thought SK's no was, like, warranted and not super surprising, although they did seem more solid moving up to the wedding. I just worried for SK not getting like a fair end of the deal with Raven. His mom continued through the end being such a sweet aspect of the season. When SK is about to say I do or I do not, his mom is like, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> it's so cute. And you could tell she was genuinely shocked and sad that he said no. And she went to comfort Raven and it was so sweet because it seemed like such a genuine love they had for each other, especially Raven's family not being there. And SK's mom just being so comforting, almost as if she was her own daughter. It was just the sweetest thing. And I'm so glad that they are still in each other's lives, which we find out about in the reunion. Raven and SK confirmed that they are still dating. And I saw <laughs> the spoiler about this because they recently moved into a house together and their neighbors came out on TikTok like, Raven and SK are still together. They moved in next door. <laughs> and that's what you get Netflix for spreading out your episodes so much. So yeah, I had actually seen that Raven and SK were still together and was expecting that announcement at the reunion, but I'm glad it was confirmed and real. I love that they're still together. I think it makes sense for them to do a more long-term dating thing because they had a lot of potential and promise, but they just quite, weren't quite ready for marriage. And SK just remained a class act. I loved how he confronted Bartise at the reunion. It was in a very classy way where um, it wasn't quite as harsh as Brennan was when he confronted Cole, but he still got his point across and Bartise seemed very respectful of him. He's such a like foil to Bartise and as, talking as if this thing is a fiction, but Bartise is so about looks and superficial stuff and SK is so not about looks yet he got the hottest girl. Like, I just love that. I love that. It's like poetry, how well that works out. Vanessa Lachey actually asked the invasive question of when did you first discover each other physically? <laughs> Which I thought was kind of out of line, but okay, Vanessa. I mean, we do, we do want to know, so, you know, I can't blame her too much. Raven and SK confirm 
after the wedding is when they had sex, I guess. <laughs> I'm rooting for them as well. I hope they make it to after the altar. I would love to continue to see them together. But yeah, that was season three. What a wild ride. Again, it was such an entertaining season, so I gotta give it to them. Gotta give it to this cast. I'm rooting for what's best for everybody. <laughs> and season three has redeemed Love is Blind for me, which is kind of a bigger takeaway from all of this. I was like, God damn, I have to cover this. People like to discuss this and watch it and I hate this show and it's so boring and manufactured. But season three reignited a lot of the interest I had around season one and I've seen a lot more discussion about Love is Blind season three. Let me know what you thought of Love is Blind season three in the comments below. What were your overall takeaways from this season? And yeah, it was a fun ride. I hope you enjoyed this series. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy. I put out new videos once or twice a week about TV, pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things. You can follow me at miscellaneous on Instagram or Twitter to find out about new videos or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.